Hello and welcome to Powder. We know that this is the comparison that you have been searching on the internet for a really long time. So fanboys, bots and everybody else who is watching this video, let's get started. Yes. And uh, if you notice, we've got a very interesting combination here because that bike says row and all the responses <laughs> of that bike comes from bots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when we first rode the Scrambler, uh, we got a unit from somebody who purchased one. That's correct. And that didn't go well for the Scrambler at all. And I'm already telling you that this particular test motorcycle is feeling better than that. In this video, we'll talk about city performance, highway performance, overall comfort levels, feature levels. And let's get this right out of the way. The price for those two motorcycles is roughly exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a thousand bucks in it right now. Yeah. And if Royal Enfield raises the price of the Scram 411 after the introductory is over, over yeah. I think the Scram will be three or four thousand rupees more. Oh. On a two lakh rupee bike, I don't think that's a reason to make a decision. The names are so similar and so confusing that Shumi was supposed to ride the Scram <laughs> yeah, 411 exactly. in the morning. When I walked into office, I was like, Why is, what is the Scrambler doing here? I was supposed to ride the Scram, I took the Scrambler. You came to office and thought, what is the Scram doing here? Shumi was supposed to take the Scram, get it? You get it, right? Yeah. What is a scrambler and which of these two motorcycles, according to you, is more scramblerish? Okay, so historically, uh, we've discussed this in our other video with the uh, scram. They were bikes designed for a British kind of event, yeah. which was point A to point B over whatever terrain happened to be along the way, mm. whether it was a water crossing, a mountain, a hill or whatever. From that perspective, they were retro bikes in the sense that they were derivatives of what was street bike design then. Correct. So in that sense, the Yazdi Scrambler is the better looking motorcycle as scramblers go. Uh, the Scram, because it starts from the Himalayan, which has a distinct design identity, but can I really call it a classically good-looking motorcycle? Not really. When you take an awkward motorcycle and make a scrambler out of it, it's not the prettiest design. Yeah. Identifiably, it will be a Himalayan-based thing. Yeah. But beyond that, that is definitely the better-looking bike. That's the Himalayan, then this is like the Aravali. <laughs> When you talk about the finish level, the build quality, yeah. uh, I, we have complaints on both the motorcycles, okay? Yeah. So, the Royal Enfield is the slightly better motorcycle here on that front. Remember on the adventure, we said that the rack on which you're supposed to mount the jerry cans or whatever is like this. Misaligned, on yeah. On this, the rear tail rack is like that. When I was up. following him, uh, uh, Shumi was riding a scrambler and I was on the scram and I was following him. Something's wrong. Then we stopped checked it and realized that the, the tail lamp and the rack is completely not in sync. So, so obvious quality issues yeah, so for both the this motorcycles. Bike, uh, and, the, and the YSD has even uglier welds. Uh, I mean, we said the Scram yes. has ugly welds, it has even uglier welds and all of that. So, the, the more we ride the two bikes together, the more we think that for the Scrambler category, which is nascent right now, these motorcycles can stand a lot of attention to detail being paid to quality and overall fit and finish. The YSD stands to benefit a lot. The scram will improve by noticeable margin. Correct. Let's move on. Engine performance. Yeah. You've got a 334cc single based off the Perak, mm. which has obviously been tuned for this motorcycle. They added a single uh, header into a double exhaust configuration for the uh, uh, Scrambler. The Scram has the same Himalayan engine with a new Absolutely map. Absolutely the same. Yeah. Uh, which makes it quite a bit smoother. Yeah. But when you are riding them back to back in the city, what's the difference? I think the highlight of this particular engine, the long stroke engine, is always the story has always been talked. And for the YSD, which is the derivative of the Java Perak, like Shumi said, it, that always has been par. The good thing about that I like about 411 is that whenever you get on the gas, yeah, it, it's got what it has to offer, which means if it says stop, get on the gas and you will be yeah. in that sweet spot. I clearly said that, you know, the, when the Perak was sold, the Perak was the USP of the Perak was never the engine, right? It was always the loops. And I think for this as well, for me, it's going to be people for whatever reason are going to buy it, will most likely buy it for the way the Scrambler looks. And every time I got close to you when you were riding the Scrambler, I could just hear this noisy, <laughs> mechanical, that's not a pleasant thing to hear because you're in 2022. Right. Things have gotten better, things have gotten quieter, things have gotten smoother. I think the Scrambler's biggest issue is that the engine delivers its performance with a lot more reluctance than the Scram. And when you yeah. ride them back to back, it's a big difference. Because uh, you have to wind up the engine on the Scrambler to get it to go as fast through traffic as the Scram easily does. Because the Scram just has torque, right? You don't make any gear changes, you open the throttle and, and it you goes, go. yeah. The Scrambler's gearbox is really nice, gears shift really easily. So out on the highway, both will do 100 kmph. Luckily for the Scrambler, 100 in 6th is where the sweet spot is. It, yeah. That's where it is the calmest and the quietest. Go above that, you've got peg vibes and engine vibration. Below that, there is still vibration somewhere in the peg, somewhere in the tank. So I think the 
Scrambler needs a lot of work before it achieves the level of simplicity that the Royal Enfield has got. I get it. Would the Scram have done better if it had a bigger top end as well? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not the greatest engine in the world, and uh, you know, considering it's coming from the Himalayan, it's already old. We said there's a new map uh, that uh, is a part of this Scram, and the newer Himalayans that are rolling out of the yeah. showroom. Your motorcycles will also get that new ECU update. Uh, moving on from the engine, uh, I think ride quality is what we want to address right now, and that is another area where there is a big difference. Yeah, but it is. Honestly, from what I rode the first time on the Scrambler to yep. what this motorcycle is doing, there is quite a bit of difference. That motorcycle was actively resisting suspension movement. Mm. This is still extremely stiff. Yeah. But I can imagine living with that motorcycle if I'm willing to get over that. Yeah. Okay. What I mean by that is, uh, the harder you ride the Scrambler, the more it seems to be able to absorb Scrambler. the bumps. Yeah. The calmer you are, the worse the ride quality gets. Mm. It's really throwing you around in the saddle when you're just gently puttering along. Right. As soon as you pick up the pace and hit the bumps harder, the suspension starts to do work, some amount yeah. of work. Unfortunately, the harder you go, the more the engine vibrates. From that perspective, uh, the Scram is quite interesting. But the ride quality is this sweet, gentle, absorptive thing. Yeah. It's almost like you expect the motorcycle to start wallowing kind of soft, although it never actually does. Mm. So in that sense, that's a really comfortable motorcycle. The Scrambler had the potential to be that because mm. I'd see nothing wrong with the formatting of it. Mm. But the selection of the spring rates and the damping and the compression and all of it coming together, yeah. to me, it doesn't work. Yeah. If you like what it looks like, mm. the biggest problem is you're either going to have a vibrating engine and decent ride quality. Correct. Or you're going to have poor ride quality and an engine that's no longer vibrating. And you're going to have to pick between the two, which, like he said, it's 2022, you shouldn't have to do. It. But the moment you leave the city and get out on the highway, it just starts to feel a little settled, especially when you're on highway roads and roads around Pune are pretty decent in that sense. Yeah. So for me, at highway, the scrambler, it feels decent. Yeah. On the other hand, I quite like the setup on the Scram as well because what they have done is revised the internals and made the overall setup a little firm and not to say that the setup on the Himalayan was entirely bad and that, that's a no, great no, setup. No, it was a bad. great calm setup. Correct. This is a slightly stiffer setup which actually feels very nice. Yeah. The smaller front wheel gives you a better sense of connection. Correct. So in that sense, I do actually think that a lot of people are going to enjoy riding the Scram a little bit more than the Himalayan. But on the highway, if you're a calm rider, I suspect that the Scram will be more to your taste. Hmm. But if you want to pick the Scrambler and go out onto the highway, I'm okay. Yeah. Cruise at 100, I'm going to say between 95 and 102 on the, uh, on on the, the speedo, Scrambler. On uh. the Scrambler and I think you'll be fine. It's the place where everything settles into the best place it can. Hmm. I just wish that that band was a little bit larger than that. Yeah. For the Scram 411 as well, because it's gotten smoother, 100 feels easier than the Himalayan. Much easier. It just feels yeah. a lot more calm, comfortable yeah. in sit and just enjoy the motorcycle in that sense. So 100 on this and 100 on the Himalayan are slightly different, but with the new map, things should be sorted. Now let's talk about the stuff that this Scrambler is clearly winning. Yeah, handling, handling, handling absolutely. Uh, I mean, I okay, yeah, between the two, definitely winning. But what the Scram 411 represents as well, I mean, the downsizing of the front wheel from the Himalayan. Yes, considering everything, the engine and all of that, keeping all of those things aside, just to ride, yeah. It's such a fun motorcycle now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, between the Himalayan and the Scram 411, if I had to choose like a long term motorcycle, I would definitely it's go a, for it. It's this. a much younger motorcycle in that sense, for sure. Yeah, but more where, urban, more youthful. Where the Scrambler really comes into its own. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. And it like, feels for like sure. a much smaller, much lighter motorcycle than the Scram 411 in almost every situation. Lighter, bol aap ne? Feels. Ah, but feels. Uh, feels. spec sheet, pe curb, curb, dry. Curb or dry, same hota hai, bro. <laughs> Oh, no, no, if you know, you know. Uh, no, what I, I, but honestly, uh, forget what the actual numbers say. The Scram 411 will always feel like a larger, heavier machine with a bigger wheelbase. It has pros and cons when you set it up like that. But you never feel like the uh, Royal Enfield is a light motorcycle. Yeah. The Scrambler always feels like a light, small, compact motorcycle. So you're much happier to throw it around. Uh, around the corners, it feels really good to corner. Where I think Yes, they can re-examine and make this motorcycle better. Is that those Seat Grip XLs aren't the best tires in the class? Yeah. But the MRF curves feel less confident than that <laughs> on road as well as off road. Especially in the wet. Yeah. Uh, and off road, we were running lower pressures than stock. Correct. Which also did not really do the 
job for confidence yeah. and those grip excels in the exact same situation just went through much 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 easier yeah. Yeah. again tire feel is a personal thing if yeah. you're happy with the curves absolutely okay yeah. but i would change those tires for sure yeah i don't find the scram 411 to be as heavy as it is on paper um, for me the even the himalayan yeah yeah it's a comparative it, heavier it's comparative not a, heavier. oh my god i'm riding a heavy motorcycle and i think adding to that character of the way the scrambler hand handles is also the way the suspension is set up so when yeah. everything just comes together the scrambler like yeah, that feel like a happier motorcycle the harder today. you go on the scrambler it all of this comes to nicer to ride but the engine is in your way that's why the refinement issue is so critical because it will unlock a completely new perspective on this motorcycle the traditional weakness of the himalayan was the brakes, brakes. yep how are the brakes on this how are the brakes on that um no difference on on the scram 411 brakes i think the biggest thing that royal enfield missed and i'll say it time and again is switchability i think we did a we had a good time when we were doing trails here and for me when i was riding the scram i was like come on man i just wish it had the how many years have you been saying better brakes and switchability brakes since the day it was launched and it's been 6 years now so but i've been saying 5 bhp also since then there's nothing about it to nahi hua let's let's go back to the brakes how are the scramblers brakes they're okay hmm. um but what the Scrambler offer. <laughs> I love how you're still pausing for uh, the name. So confusing. <laughs> Is this options to toggle between yes. braking modes? Technically, ABS modes, not braking modes. Sorry, I'm I'm in uh, there. They're the ABS modes. Scram doesn't have any. It's yeah. just. they're on in terms of feel feedback the scram blur is in a decent <laughs> place <laughs> gotcha. it's in a decent place uh, could these brakes have been sharper for road use yes for off road use no i think they found a very very neat nice balance between point. the yeah, two yeah. we are okay uh, the himalayan and the scram always traditionally had a very weak bite on the brake but okay. overall that is the weak link i think in the mechanical okay. composition of that motorcycle okay. um, that leaves us with features yeah who has uh, more features clearly honestly <laughs> Yeah, see, wow, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I got Bluetooth also in my pocket and Wi-Fi. Are you ready? Wait, you also. Have. I also. But have I have a six and a half inch. How many do you have? Let's not get into inches. No, we're just talking about features. <laughs> but anyway, talking about features, I mean, these aren't motorcycles. It's not a car. I mean, you don't get a lot of features on these motorcycles. It's a great idea. Power windows on the scram would be yeah, awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. The one thing that I think that Royal Enfield has done a good job is just getting a new console in place. I mean, it's just a much neater. cooler more youthful display <laughs> i don't understand the display on the scrambler because you have it on the right hand side uh, and the left hand side is sort of empty so you're looking at the headlamp cover in, in that sense and i'm like yeah. either kuch to aa sakta tha but clearly nothing's there it's designed bro uska bhi off center hai uska the tripper has always been off center but that's like but tripper is miy no it's not standard so ha, technically correct. both the meters have a single pot display that's they're correct. both reasonably clear they're yeah. both off center and you're either going to enjoy the idea of slightly quirky design uh, before or you're not uh, royal uh, enfield is the only company of these two uh, that's offering you a way to fill that gap if mm. it is bothering you by adding a tripper to it which brings bluetooth and navigation and all that yeah. drama on the yezzy adventure you get the bluetooth navigation part of it with that color tft screen and all that as standard mm. uh, but on the scrambler what we were told is that yezzy is trying to figure out a way where you can retrofit that system on to the scrambler and therefore be able to connect to the yezzy app and all of those things but we've not heard any further movement on that um features wise honestly there's not much separating the two motorcycles the scram clearly has a slightly better seat both for the rider and the pillion uh the scrambler seat is not bad but the fact that it kicks up like this is not going to be a happy place for a pillion it's also not going to be a happy place for your luggage because when you mount the luggage it cans towards you hmm. it leans forward so if you're riding alone with luggage you should still be okay if your luggage is securely mounted but if you're putting a pillion on they're going to be leaning forward the whole time I'm not sure that this is going to be a pleasant experience. The one thing that I want to add is uh when I was riding the scrambler in bright sunlight um uh, I it, it's a little dim. Dude, both of these bo both of you guys finish your exhausts. <laughs> yeah. The Royal Enfield's exhaust uh, the colors the way the thing can is it's a little unfinished. Mm -hmm. The Yezdi is better because it's that brushed finish. Mm -hmm. But where the brushed finish ends again that cap Weldry, is really yeah, dirty yeah. and the welds are dirty. Yep. And with that we'll finally sort of summarize everything and bring it down to price 2.05x showroom roughly for both which one for you after riding both these motorcycles is the one that appeals to your taste more the fact that you have to rev out the scrambler actually is appealing to me 
Okay. That's how I want to ride my motorcycles. I'm never the torque guy. I'm never the guy who's letting the rev sit at 3000 and sort of chugging along. The scrambler disappoints me by needing me to rev it out but not giving me the refinement back. Mm. That's the one reason why I cannot buy the scrambler in the way it is right now. It just sounds like it's suffering a little bit. So as of today, gun to my head, the Scram 411 is what I would have to pick. But uh, honestly, neither of these two motorcycles to me is a good enough scrambler for mm. me to think about bringing one of them into my garage. But uh, honestly, none of these machines at the 2 lakh rupee mark is what I would buy. If I had 2 lakh rupees, um, I'm gravitating towards what? The RTR 200, RR 310, uh, some of the smaller KTMs, the 250, something like that. Not these. Okay. What sure. about you? Engine that you feel the most connect with. And for me, that's what the scrambler is missing. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is a good motorcycle to ride. It's ha it handle handles well. For me, it's all right. Don't quote bots bots on the video, okay? <laughs> uh, but the engine, it it just lacks character. It just lacks feel. And for me, I don't like high revving engines. Yeah, I mean, I might have been a fan of inline for motorcycles, but for me, I just don't like that feeling of being great. It would, that high revving feeling would have been great if. The return would have been equal. It's just not enjoyable. As far as the Scram 411 goes, with this coming in, I just feel it's a lot more usable. And my use case is very similar to Shumi's use case as well. I don't go off-road as much. For me, it's more road riding. And for me, between the Himalayan and the Scram, the Scram is a motorcycle that I would gravitate towards because that 19-inch front wheel does make a difference. Y'all should test ride and decide. And both. And in fact, when you go to a showroom, test ride the Himalayan as well as the Scram. So for me, it's, if it's a gun to the head question, yeah, Scram 411, but there are a lot of other options in the market for 20,000 rupees more, 20,000 rupees less. We've given you a lot of information on these two motorcycles, but as always, we urge you strongly to go Please. test ride and decide for yourself. This video should be nothing more than a guideline for you. That brings us to one traditional strength that all older manufacturers have over the newer ones, which is they have a larger distribution network, which means it'll be easier for you to get a Scram test ride than a Scrambler test ride. If you're in a big city, not a challenge. Yeah. If you're not in a big city, it will be something that you'll have to deal with. Correct. So think about how you're going to get the bike serviced and all of those things. We understand that the Himalayan and Scram service is a little bit less expensive than the ESD service. Yes. If that is a factor for you because you're stretching your budget to get these machines, factor that in. And once you do this, I strongly urge you to come back here and leave us a comment and tell us what you thought of these two motorcycles. If you're a human, give us a thumbs up. If you're a human, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. If you're a bot, Varun Painter will see you later.